Hello everybody and welcome back for book nine, First Samuel. Now First Samuel is broken up into three parts. The first part talks about his life, his beginning, his mother Hannah prays prayed and prayed and prayed for a son and she promised that uh, she would bring this this kid up in the Lord so when she had the, had her son she named him Samuel and then she um, she gave him or she took him to the temple to serve under the priest Eli now when Samuel grew up, he actually became the very last judge. And if this book is interesting because it talks about a lot of first and, and last. He's the very last judge. And after he started to age, the people started to ask him, I mean to ask God because of, because of his aging. They asked God for a king. So it also opens up the doorway for the first kings. And the first king that God told Samuel to appoint was King Saul. Now, King Saul did start off doing a great job initially, but then he started basically falling off, making mistakes. And, um, you know, God had a, a relationship with Samuel. So Samuel was like a prophet. Or he maybe he, he was a prophet. Samuel was a prophet. He wasn't like a prophet. He was a prophet. So he was a prophet. He was a judge. So he he had a direct relationship with God. And he also was appointed to be one of the rulers that God set in place. Now, God didn't want kings. He didn't want to raise up kings. But because the people kept asking for a king, for a king then God said, okay, they want a king. We'll give them a king. So starts the line of the kings, starting with Saul. Now, go ahead and read the story, but Saul starts making all kinds of mistakes, breaking his own laws, consulting with mediums, and things like that. So then, he was stripped of his title as king. God said, we got enough of this. Samuel, Samuel warned him also, and he didn't listen, and he was stripped as king. So then David was to be king after Saul. Now, we're all familiar with the story of David and Goliath. Um, when David was to become king, um, basically Saul tried to kill him. So, uh, David, he ran away. He went into hiding. And even though he had ample opportunities to kill Saul himself, he said that he would not touch the one that God has anointed. And God had placed Saul in that position. And David said, I'm not going to do it. His exact words. I will not stretch forth mine hand against the Lord's anointed. That's 1 Samuel 26, verse 23. So then, toward the end of us, uh, 1 Samuel, uh, Saul dies battling the Philistines, and David becomes king. Now, some of the quotes from 1 Samuel. Okay, 1 Samuel 8, verses, uh, verse 7. The Lord said unto Samuel, They have not rejected thee, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. And this is when they're asking for a king. You know, they didn't reject Saul. I mean, not Saul. They didn't reject Samuel in the Lord's eyes anyway. But the Lord said, they have not rejected you, but they've rejected me. And they don't want me to rule over them. They wanted a physical person that they can see, I guess. And basically wanted him in place of a perfect God who could rule justly or who does and still rules but they didn't want him they wanted a person somebody that looked like them and basically look what 
they've gotten themselves into. They got a king and king after king after king and they've all they all fall. They start off great and they all fall into the sin and the flesh flesh fleshy desires of our flesh and they fall into sin because it's just in our nature. So anywho, I can go on and on and on about this, but and it's a very interesting book. It opens up pathways for a lot of very familiar biblical stories, such as David and Goliath. And um, so go check it out and read it for yourself. I mean, it's not even just Saul, it's his sons. It's a lot of things that go on during Saul's life and his kingship, and then David's life and David's kingship. And very interesting book. So, anyway. I hope you guys are intrigued by the little bit of information that I've given you in the synopsis. And I will see you guys next video. God bless you. Hello, everybody. Today, finally, is the day that we're going to talk about the eighth book in the Bible, which is the book of Ruth. It is really, really short. Very short book. Um, probably... I'm sure the shortest book up to this point. Now, who was Ruth? Okay, so Ruth, well, she's a Moabite. And she marries a Jewish man um, who dies. As a matter of fact, her brother-in-law dies too, and her father-in-law. And her mother-in-law is... Um, upset and unhappy because she's lost everything. She 